They say that war is hell, and it is hell, but most people have never been there. They haven't seen war. That's a good thing, and we want to keep it that way. But now that we're seeing what's happening in Ukraine so vividly, thanks to social media, which I basically don't like, but it's providing a real service. What's happening right now over there is an atrocity. Take a look. brutal. The only reaction really is to hate war when you see something like this. So many people, even our policymakers, they think war is is clean and precise. It is messy. It is ugly. Innocent people die. That's why you want to fight a war as the last possible resort. This was a war of choice for Vladimir Putin. And again, thanks to social media, we are seeing things almost in real time that we would not have seen without it. Most people can be pretty tolerant of violence if it's far away. It's an abstraction. Now that it's far away, but we're seeing it, it's, I think, changing world history. One of the reasons why the Ukrainians are doing so well, and Vladimir Putin, he may not survive all this, that's my hope, it's because of social media, the world's reaction, seeing it. You know, World War II, was it like that? No. Uh, you know, World War II was a just war, but, you know, that was a guy typing something in a ditch. You might see it in three weeks if we were lucky, or another guy literally cutting a record uh, good luck hearing that um, within a month, maybe two, of the actual combat. Things got a little bit more, a little bit more immediate. They still had to develop the film and fly it back to the United States. You're about to see uh, Morley Safer. Remember him? He became famous on 60 Minutes. Here he is in Vietnam. The war in Vietnam is all about. <laughs> the old and the very young. The Marines have burned. Come this way, Khan. The people that are left. Today's operation is the frustration of Vietnam in miniature. There is little doubt that American firepower can win a military victory here. But to a Vietnamese peasant whose home is a means a lifetime of backbreaking labor, it will take more than presidential promises to convince him that we are on his side. Morley Safer, CBS News. The war in Vietnam is all about. All right, Morley Safer, CBS News. So there was a lot of spin in that. I mean, it's pretty vivid reporting. It's interesting, but it's spin, some of it, and there are only a few guys doing it. So they held immense power, and it stayed that way uh, for a while. Actually, let's take a look at the first Gulf War, CNN. Remember all their live coverage? But it was basically watching maps all night long aircraft here so far and while we can't see uh, activity we can hear bombs landing possibly to the uh, north of our hotel and then things got much more interesting in 2003 for the invasion of iraq the embedded correspondent and i was one of them we've seen military vehicles we've also seen a lot of civilian white pickup trucks come at us almost on suicide missions returned by Bradley fighting vehicles as well as tanks. This was wild. This was a thunder run into Baghdad. It was crazy. And then we did the same thing the next day. Uh, I was happy to be there up until we got to Baghdad. Anyway, um, but it was just me and a few others uh, who could do this, who had the live presence thanks to our networks. Now you don't need any of that stuff. You just need a bunch of cell phones and the images have been, well, they've set the war on, they've set the world on fire. Take a look, it's all over the place, nonstop. Instagram has actually been uh, very, very powerful. People don't like what they are seeing and they hate Putin more than ever. And understandably, we're holding him responsible. And by the way, I think it really could. I'm no 
expert. I do have some knowledge, but I think this is all gonna fall in on Putin. Number one, he's overextended himself. The map, it looks impressive. He's coming in from all these directions, but that is very, very complicated and difficult to sustain. Maybe you've seen some of the long lines of tanks, columns of armored vehicles moving into Ukraine. Well, when they're miles and miles long, it's very tough to keep them supplied, to keep them fueled. You can't just pull over to a gas station. You, the Russian military in this case, have to keep them all supplied. It's very difficult. I think Vladimir Putin, um, he did kind of jump the shark. He is believing his own hype. You've seen the hype, so have I. All these headlines for years about what a master strategist Vladimir Putin is. Not too much though about what a brutal guy, what a killer he was. That was kind of brushed aside, but a quick reminder here, this guy had reporters killed. He actually had reporters killed, we believe. Also, his political rivals, critics, uh, they have been uh, poisoned, they've been shot, all kinds of horrible things. And I don't think he's paid attention to the stuff that he's supposed to pay attention to, especially as a guy who wants to invade countries. This plan of his looks like it's fundamentally flawed. You see signs of that. We talked about the overextension. We see tanks and artillery vehicles getting stuck in the mud. This should not be happening. Just a theory of mine, but I've been watching, we've all been watching Russia for a long time. You still see weird things that shouldn't be happening in a civilized country. All kinds of mysterious plane crashes. I have a theory that the Russian people, a lot of them are living a little bit too hard, drinking way too much. We all know that about the Russians. The average life expectancy for a man is just 66 years old, 10 years shorter than the lifespan of a woman. I think there's something there. We'll see when this is all over, and I hope it ends soon. They're meeting in Belarus, some of the uh, representatives. Could there be a peace deal? I hope so. Trump helped. Trump helped when he gave them or sold them all those Javelin missiles. You know what those are? Take a look. These are shoulder-fired, very easy to use uh, anti-tank missiles. They're extremely effective, and we've already seen them used in combat by the Ukrainians against the Russians. Take a look. That is a, a battlefield victory. And President Trump provided Javelin missiles, lethal aid during his administration. It's true. Uh, President Obama only gave blankets. Look at this. Uh, this was the policy under the Trump administration. By the way, Trump talked about this at CPAC this past weekend. If you didn't watch the speech, I suggest you watch it in its entirety. Some very good stuff there that the fake news is not going to show you. He was very clear about what is going on in Ukraine, a clear condemnation of the Russians and this horrible invasion. The Russian attack on Ukraine is appalling. It's an outrage and an atrocity that should never have been allowed to occur. It never would have occurred. We are praying for the proud people of Ukraine. God bless them all. God bless them all. Did you hear that? He called it appalling. He called it an outrage. He called it an atrocity. That's not good enough for the fake news. All right, so 12 hours after this speech on Saturday night, it's time for the Sunday shows. And George Clintonopoulos, I think they still call him, uh, was talking to Tom Cotton. Half of the interview, he was trying to badger him about Trump and what he said. You've been stalwart in your opposition to Vladimir Putin. The same cannot be said for the leader of your party, Donald Trump. Uh, last night, he finally condemned the invasion, but he also repeated his praise of Putin, calling him smart. Earlier in the week, he called him pretty smart. He called him savvy. He says NATO and the U.S. are dumb. Are you prepared to condemn that kind of rhetoric from the leader of your party? Why can't you condemn Donald Trump for those comments? You're a senior member of the Republican Party. Donald Trump is the leader of the Republican Party. He said last night again, suggested that he would be running for president. When Fox News asked him if he had a message for Vladimir Putin, he said he has no message. Why can't you condemn that? I feel quite confident that if Donald, that if Barack Obama or Joe Biden said something like that, you'd be first in line to criticize him. 
President Trump was, former President Trump was out there talking about it last night. I simply don't understand why you can't condemn his praise of Vladimir Putin. Is George Stephanopoulos willing to condemn his own praise of Vladimir Putin and everybody else in the fake news for the past 20 years? Here are the headlines, all right? Headline after headline. He can still be a smart guy and be a brutal man who just committed an atrocity. It's okay. I just, I find that wild. Question after question after question. What do you think, huh? All right. Hey, red meat at this uh, CPAC speech. If President Trump talks about these issues in this manner, there's no way he can lose. Well, don't want to jinx it, but I think this is very effective. They indoctrinate your children to hate their parents while calling you a hateful racist. They stick the FBI on mothers at school board meetings while they teach four-year-olds to pick their own genders. Would you like to change your gender? And they say it's absolutely fine for a boy or man to participate in women's sports. I don't think so. Who's going to argue with that? Whoever does argue with that is going to lose the election. Here's more. Now we know that crooked Hillary not only spied on my campaign, she spied on the White House. Do you remember when I said years ago, I think they spied in my campaign and everybody said on the other side, how dare he say that? How dare he? Well, it turned out to be true. And I want to thank John Durham for figuring that out. He was right, huh? And uh, the fake news never acknowledged their mistake. Let's wrap this up with, I think, possibly the most powerful and optimistic moment for me. The radical left is trying to replace American democracy with woke tyranny. They want to do the same thing to America that Trudeau has been doing to Canada, and much, much worse. Our mission in 2022 and in 2024 is to take on this radical and power-hungry ruling class and to deliver them an electoral defeat so resounding that they are exiled into political oblivion, never ever to return again. I love it, political oblivion. I love the way that sounds. 